Hello, welcome back to Turk Karate TV. We're going to be talking today about Kusan Kukata. And Kusan Kukata, very strong history in all the Shurite and Tumarite traditions. It is part of the Shotokan group, most powerful and oldest katas in Okinawan karate. It came to us in a rather strange way through the work of the founding father of Okinawan Karate, which is Tode Sakugawa. Now, Sakugawa Sensei was born in 1786 and he dies in 1867. He was around for a good long time and he taught some of the most important people uh, of ancient Okinawa the art that he learned in China, which is part of where he studied. Another time he studied in Okinawa with a teacher called Takahara, uh, who was a member of the gentry. One of the first things that we have to realize is that karate in ancient Okinawa was not for the common everyday person. It was for the nobility, and for the gentry, the people that ran the country. And what would happen is that the children of these people would need to go get an education. And of course, they were sent to the place where they found the best education, which was China. And when they were there, they learned school and martial arts. When Tode Sakugawa comes back to Okinawa, he comes back and he begins to study with someone named Kusanku. The funny thing is, there is no one named Kusanku. It is just a title for a government official from China, like captain or lieutenant or komutant, bashkan. The bottom line is that there was a person but he was a government official from China. The connection between what Sakugawa learned in China, what he learned from this military envoy, plus what he learned from Takahara, combined together to formulate what we now call the Kusan Kukata. Some researchers have said that the original name of this kata was Ufukun. Now, if you translate Ufukun, it means Kusanku Dai, large Kusanku. Dai is large, Sho is small. The Dai and Sho divisions of Kusanku come from Itosu Sensei, who divided them up and made them simpler for many people to be able to do within the school systems. But we know that. What do we know more than anything else about this kata? We know that there's a lot of mythology associated with it. We know that there was a record written down about a Chinese guy who was able to do a special type of leg technique and that that leg technique was put into this particular kata. It doesn't matter what the record is, it, it's, it's not important. What's important is that the idea that this kata was generated from the grandfather of Okinawan karate based on what he learned as a combination of different styles, inclusive of Chinese technique, is what has become the Kusanku kata that has evolved over time from the Shurite tradition to the Tomarite tradition to the school tradition of Itosu Sensei. So what we have is three major divisions of the kata. We have the Shurite, we have the Tomarite, and then we have the Matsumura family tradition three different katas, the same name, same embuzen, 
different techniques, but a very closely related friendship between them. A friendship that you can see, whether it be in the Shutos that are in all the Kavas, or in the initial movements to the left and right that we see in Shobokan, or that we see in the Tomari dragon to Kamai postures. Regardless of what the techniques are, the Anguzen is the same. And each of the three have inside them the driving energy of the individual members of that particular Ruha who formulated the Kata. Bushi Matsumura formulated the Kata that comes through the family line. He teaches it to Itosu, Itosu changes it, Itosu then gives it to Funakoshi through Asato who also changes it. So we have Kusanku become Kusanku Dai, Kusanku Sho, and Punakoshi grabs it, takes it to Japan, and calls it Kanku Dai, Kanku Sho. We have Bushi Matsumura teaching a specific method only to his family that we nowadays call Matsumura Kusanku. And then we have, and this is Chatan Yara. And this man formulated and studied the same katas that these people did, but put his own twist in the kata. And it's a more complicated kata. It follows the kihon of Tomari, just like the others follow each different kihon. One of the interesting things about this kata is that it has in it influences from points of view that we would never expect looking at the modern day versions. For example, if we see this in the Shotokan version, never in your mind would you think that the influence that's in this kata from China is Tai Chi. But if you look at the Matsumura version and you see them doing the Shutos this slow and then energizing at the end, slow and energizing at the end, you find then the connectivity to the traditional martial tradition of Tai Chi Chuan. So the kata is powerful. It has in it joint locking techniques from China called Qina or Kina, which in Okinawa is called Tuite. And it has in it a very advanced and complicated system of striking the nerve points of the body in conjunction units of three. Now, uh, there's a lot that we can say about the kata, a lot more we can say about it. Uh, the kata has gone into different variations in the modern age. Um, it actually has the, the latest variant that we have found is Chibana no Kusanku, which comes from the Shudokan Japanese system of Kanken Toyama Sensei. So the kata evolves, but it maintains its tradition, its history, and its energy. Without it, we would be less than we are today in karate. I hope you enjoyed it. Domo arigatou gozaimashita.